So as uh, the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, a national call for moral revival that's organizing in 45 states across the United States, connecting poor people and other uh, low-wage workers and folks without health care with, with moral leaders and clergy and people of conscience, with activists and organizers. You know, we, we see that what, what needs to happen um, is to shift the narrative get our nation, get our world talking about the real issues of our day, the real moral issues, you know, healthcare, human flourishing, being able to thrive and not just barely survive, having quality uh, education at all levels for the fulfillment of human rights, have societies and, and, and nations that build from the bottom up, um, organize themselves around the, the needs and the demands of of those that are poor and marginalized and living in very uh, desperate situations um, and that we have to shift this narrative we have to start talking about what vision really we do have uh, for a world a world without war a world without conflict a world where everybody um, not just a select few have all of their needs met uh, and we have to you know, hold out this this hope and this vision, and we have to defeat this idea that there's just scarcity, that this is as good as it gets, that the only way for us to have just all all kinds of all kinds of things to do with um, holding out this this vision of a of a beautiful society, and you know how how we talk about this work in our in our work today is we have to address simultaneously five interlocking injustices. And uh, that includes systemic racism, um, the ways that people of color, black people, Latinos, indigenous people, Asian, but folks from all nations, all nationalities, all races uh, are impacted by uh, the kind of devaluing of life. We have to take on this issue of, of poverty, economic exploitation, exclusion, uh, the lack of healthcare, the denial of of living wages. And then we connect that to, to the destruction of the earth and and the environment and see that those who are hurt first and worst by by climate chaos, by um, displacement, by extreme weather, um, but also by the lack of infrastructure and the sanitation services, the lack of well water and, and especially clean water, um, the polluting of our land and our air and our and our ourselves, um, you know, is, is impacting, you know, poor and low income, low wealth people the most. And then we connect it to militarism and to this war economy. We see that that any any nation in the world that like the United States does, that spends 53 cents of every discretionary dollar on the military, but less than 15 cents combined on health care, on education, on anti-poverty programs, on making sure that folks have living wage jobs, on building up um, the kind of communities that that we need. That any nation that does that um, is a is approaching spiritual death. Um, and we talk about you know needing to to change these war economy that we're living in to a peace economy, uh, to one where there's cooperation and and uh, and diplomacy. And, and one where there surely is no place for, for nuclear uh, nuclear arms, but also no place for, for the tanks and um, that are being sent back into poor communities to police uh, folks that are, are trying to uh, cry out that, that, that black lives matter, that indigenous lives matter. And, and then we see that, that all of these injustices, racism, poverty, the destruction of the earth and, and militarism are all kind of held together by this false narrative, this narrative of religious nationalism and in, in many cases, Christian nationalism um, and a narrative that defines the, the real moral issues and the real security issues of our day as that Jesus was a card carrying member of, of rights to have military grade equipment you know that this is somehow the the conversation and and not that that really what what matters is is uh, human rights and human flourishing and so um, our our strategy of shifting this narrative then connects with our need to build power um, build power amongst those that are impacted by injustice um, those who see that another world is possible and and so we in the United States are organizing amongst the 140 million people who are poor or one storm, one job loss, 
one housing crisis, one healthcare crisis away from economic ruin. And, and we see that what we have to contribute to a, a global movement for peace and justice is to organize and unite poor and low income people in this country into a powerful alliance and movement that can connect up with folks all over the world and, and who can hear and and in one of the bellies of the beast, you know, can really say that that we have to say no to war. We have to say no to to this kind of warring madness um, and warmongering. We have to say no to to anything that that can kind of annihilate life in the way that the kind of militarization of our whole world um, does. And and that this is a a poor people's issue. Um, and that also that poverty is a peace as a peace issue um, and a justice issue. So, so the Poor People's Campaign, you know, uh, formed about three years ago, but is deeply inspired by, by movements of the past that um, have come together, bringing people together across lines that divide us and engaging in what we call moral fusion direct action. Moral because we think the real moral issues of our day are, are, are living wages and and strong welfare programs and and healthcare and education a fusion because we believe and and have studied U.S. history and world history and seen when people who are coming from diverse ge geographies, uh, from different racial backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, different religions, kind of come together and band together, especially poor folk that are are being impacted by unjust structures and systems, um, that that's when um, new possibilities arise. Um, and then direct action, you know, rooted in um, the steps and the understanding of nonviolent direct, um, nonviolent civil disobedience and, and, um, and resistance, uh, where when we launched the Poor People's Campaign, uh, we launched it with the largest and most expansive wave of nonviolent civil disobedience in the 21st century in the United States, um, where thousands and thousands of people presented themselves, you know, put themselves out there saying that the, that the racist system, this anti-poor system, this militarized uh, world that we live in, and this uh, death-dealing, earth-destroying system, you know, uh, it is killing poor people and is is shortening the lives of so many. And so, you know, the last campaign that that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was working on before he was assassinated was a poor people's campaign. And he said that the Achilles heel, the, the weak point of a, a system that saw racism and econo economic exploitation and militarism as these tripartite evils, the weakness of that um, system that pulled those evils together was to unite and organize poor people across racial and geographic lines and engage in, in massive uh, civil disobedience, um, nonviolent resistance. And, uh, you know, he proposed that to bring thousands and thousands of poor people, you know, to the United States nation's capital in Washington, D.C. Um, in the case of the Poor People's Campaign, we've actually been engaging in nonviolent civil disobedience and direct action in states all across the country as well as in Washington, D.C., um, you know, calling out the, the immorality of, of structures and systems that definitely basically privilege profit corporations, you know, military contractors over um, people's lives and, and, and livelihoods. And, um, uh, and so, so we engage in, in direct action. Um, it, it means that we follow the steps of nonviolent civil disobedience and, and, and resistance um, uh, we're not just kind of cursing the darkness. We're not just saying all the things that are wrong, but we're holding out the possibility that that it doesn't have to be this way. That that a, a different way of of organizing society is possible, and that global cooperation is 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 what actually is the moral way to go.